On February 10, 1962, at 8.52 a.m. Berlin time, a swap of spies was conducted on the Gleenicker Bridge, a restricted crossing forming the border between West Berlin and East Germany across Lake Wannsee during the Cold War. It has been dubbed as the Bridge of Spies because of its frequent use as a setting for the exchange of captured spies. The East German government also referred to it as the Bridge of Unity. On that fateful day, the Soviets released American spy pilot Francis Gary Powers in exchange for Soviet colonel and senior KGB spy William August Fisher. With the United States conducting the first major exchange of spies during the Cold War, a German lawyer named Wolfgang Vogel, active in East Germany, just brokered one of his most famous spy exchanges. On May the 1st, 1960, during an espionage mission, American pilot Powers was shot down by the Soviet Air Defense Forces as he flew in a US U-2 spy plane. He crashed and parachuted near Sverdlovsk, which was present-day Yekaterinburg, and was subsequently captured. As he plummeted down to Earth, Powers feared the tortures possibly awaiting him. He still hoped to escape. He didn't use the poison-laced injection pin hidden in a silver dollar coin wrapped around his neck. It's a good thing he didn't kill himself then. After months of interrogation, Powers was forced to give a voluntary public confession and an apology for violating Soviet airspace to spy on them. When the White House admitted that Powers was captured alive, the media depicted him as an all-American pilot hero. They said he didn't smoke nor drink even though he did. Even the CIA sedated his wife Barbara and even committed her to a psychiatric ward to be strictly supervised, giving her talking points for the press and portraying herself as a devoted wife. Her broken leg was said to be from a water skiing incident, when in reality, she fell after drinking and dancing too much with another man with whom she was allegedly having an affair. But when Powers confessed and apologized to the Soviet Union, the media turned and called him a coward, calling him a symptom of the decay of America's moral character. On August 19, 1960, Powers was sentenced to 10 years of confinement, three in prison, and the rest in a labor camp. On June 22, 1953, 14-year-old newspaper boy Jimmy Bozart was paid with a nickel that felt too suspiciously light. He dropped it accidentally, and it cracked open. A microfilm was hiding inside. On it was a cryptic series of numbers. Finding it a little bit too suspicious, Jimmy reported it to a daughter of a New York City Police Department officer, who then told a detective, who then told an FBI agent. Nobody could decipher it until four years later when a KGB agent exposed the secrets of this hollow nickel, a container of coded messages eventually leading to William Fisher's downfall. Rudolf Ivanovich Abel, whose real name was William August Fisher, rejoined the KGB in 1946 and was trained as a spy to enter the US. He was a former member of the Joint State Political Directorate or OGPU before it became the Committee for State Security, or KGB. During the fall of 1948, while en route from the Soviet Union to US, he changed his Soviet passport for a US passport, now bearing the name Andrew Kayotis, one of his first false identities. Fisher met with another Soviet named Josef Romoldovich Grigolevich, codenamed Max, or Arthur, on November 26, 1948. Grigolevich gave Fisher the birth certificate, among other things, of Emil Robert Goldfuss. Fisher was now Goldfuss, codenamed Mark. In October 1952, Rhino Haihanen left a thumbtack on a signpost in New York Central Park as a covert signal to Fisher that he has arrived as his new assistant. Codenamed Vic, Haihanen acted under the alias Eugene Nikolai Maki. Haihanen started to work as Fisher's assistant in 1954, but Fisher despised his lack of work ethics and debauchery. Fisher rested in Moscow for six months in 1955 out of exhaustion from the pressures of his work. He reported Haihanen's floppy work. He returned to New York in 1956 to find his constructed spy network breaking down. He found old messages and drop points left unopened. 
Haihanan's radio transmissions were sent using incorrect radio frequencies and regularly from the same location, a sloppy job for an agent. Haihanan even spent the KGB money supposedly for operations on vodka and prostitutes. In early 1957, Fisher demanded that Moscow recall Haihanan. Haihanan was told that a promotion to lieutenant colonel was waiting for him and that he was to go to the Soviet Union. Fearing that a disciplinary action or even an execution was waiting for him, Haihanan entered the American embassy in Paris and asked for asylum, revealing himself as a KGB officer instead of continuing his journey back to Moscow. The CIA officials in Paris doubted his story until he produced a hollow Finnish 5 mark coin. A microfilm was inside solving the hollow nickel case four years prior. On May 11, 1957, the CIA flew Haihanan back to the US and handed him to the FBI. He was cooperative. He presented Fisher's code name Mark and his location. The KGB did not know about Haihanan's betrayal until August, but they most likely warned Fisher earlier. But his code names and aliases have been compromised. The KGB tried to give him a new identity, but on June 21, 1957, he was captured before he could leave. The only thing that he admitted was that he was a Soviet citizen and that his real name was Rudolf Ivanovich Abel. That name was of a deceased friend and a KGB colonel. The FBI searched his room in Hotel Latham where he was staying during a vacation and his photo studio in Ovington Studios building on Fulton Street where he posed as an artist and a photographer. His espionage equipment was seized. Haihanan testified against him. Fisher served just over four years of his 30-year sentence. On February 10, 1962, he was exchanged with American pilot Francis Powers. There were oppositions to the exchange, in particular with Chief of CIA Counterintelligence James Jesus Angleton. He believed that Powers deliberately defected to the Soviet side and have already revealed sensitive information. On the other hand, Fisher had only revealed little. But then again, the CIA feared that Powers might learn of the abuses committed against his wife, pushing him to reveal more to the Soviets. It might have convinced them to do the exchange. Others at the CIA, including Angleton, still opposed it. But President John F. Kennedy gave the green light. In the middle of that exchange was the enigmatic German lawyer Wolfgang Vogel. He was the main channel between the Soviet bloc and the West for three decades, bringing freedom to many political prisoners. Powers and Fisher was his first spy swapping case. The tension between the US and the Soviet Union was high at the time. President Eisenhower tried to claim that Powers was only on a routine weather patrol. But Nikita Khrushchev produced the espionage equipment and the pilot. A scheduled summit meeting in Paris in May 1960 collapsed. Eisenhower canceled a planned visit to Moscow. The incident with Powers hindered the talks of thawing the Cold War tensions that the previous few years were building upon. But perhaps the exchange led by Vogel helped with easing the conflict, as he acted as the foundation of the Bridge of Spies. 